Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Course Studio. Welcome to the show. So on this episode, I'm going to be going through my tier rankings for the most powerful artifact deck commanders. Now, when I say artifact deck commander, I mean a commander that is running an artifact deck, not necessarily an artifact that is a commander, if you know what I mean. Regardless, these commanders that are on this list are based off of EDH Rex, most popular artifact commanders on their themes page. So make sure you check that list out if yeah, you're concerned that your commander wasn't on there for some reason. That, that, that's okay. There are definitely commanders that are artifact-centric in some ways, but might not have as many decks in that category that aren't put there. Regardless, let's jump into it. And again, with these tiers, S tier is the top tier, D tier is the bottom tier. And yeah, these commanders I'm going through kind of in a random order, and I actually haven't put a list together yet. I kind of find it fun to do it on the fly to kind of just give you my, my thoughts as I go. So here we go. Freya Ethereum Shaper. 4-4 Ledger Artifact Creature Human. That is in four colors, white, blue, black, red. Enters the battlefield, you get two Thopters with flying, pay two, sacrifice two artifacts, choose one, three damage to player or planeswalker or tar creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn, or you gain five life. So very flexible. There's a lot going on here. Again, a four mana commander. So you've got access to a lot of things. I mean, not quite five color, but nearly there. And uh, yeah, ETB is decent, getting two Thopters, that's nice. And being able to sacrifice artifacts can be huge. Basically, again, like a lightning bolt worth of damage, taking out a medium-sized or small creature, or gaining some life, sure, that can be useful as well. Yeah, this one definitely, I think, years ago, was definitely more and more powerful. There have been some that kind of have usurped that throne in, in more recent years. This one is very good. There are certain artifacts that you can really take advantage of that actually want to be sacrificed. There are, of course, certain triggers that you can really take advantage of, too. This one is solid. It is kind of a tough place to start off with, so I'm really up upset that Bray is actually the first commander. I think that... Oh, gosh, I might regret this. I'm sorry, Bray. I'm going to throw you in the B tier because I think there's just certain commanders out there that do outclass you, though, obviously, there are some incredibly powerful decks that can be built around this one. I mean, if you've seen... Alex eggs decks. Oh my goodness, that is pretty crazy. Okay, moving on. Joy Erupt, Weatherlight Captain. This is, uh, I did uh, an episode on this. The deck I won't play anymore because uh, it was pretty gross. A 3-3 three, three Human Artificer for two blue red. Whenever you cast a Soric spell, draw a card. That can be an artifact, ledger, or saga. Obviously, the one we are considering is artifact, which is the most powerful build around this commander because, yeah, again, artifacts can be very broken. If you play a bunch of zero mana artifacts or artifact, you're reducing things to actually get your artifacts to zero. There are plenty of loops that you can do. There's ways to basically make this into a, an insane draw. draw engine where you're just drawing a ton of cards throughout the turn with this. And uh, yeah, just kind of taking the turn to yourself and artifacts storming off and winning from there. Yeah, Joyra, very, very powerful commander. I think I'd have to say that Joyra with, again, I'm talking about, you know, the most powerful build of this from, in my opinion, like a casual perspective. Yeah, I think Joyra is going to have to go into the A tier, actually, just because of that potential. And go ahead and comment below on how I'm already wrong on Brea and Joyra. Moving on. Imitech the Stormlord, A3-3, Necron, 4-2, Black, Black. Whenever one or more artifact cards leave your graveyard, you get 2-2-2, two, 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 Black, Necron, artifact, creature tokens. Beginning of combat of your turn, another target, artifact, creature gains, plus 2, plus 2, and gains mess until your turn. Um... This one is interesting. This one is, I mean, power level wise compared to some of these others, just kind of lacking. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's kind of like Tormod ish, but uh, it gives you twice as many tokens, but specifically for artifacts leaving your graveyard. So you can make a decent army once you get things set up. You are limited mono black, which is still a good mono color, though. Uh, I mean, that combat is nice to be able to get something through. That's not that great. The thing that you really want to build around is that trigger to get a ton of creatures, a big army. I mean, it's not the worst. It's not the best. It's it's definitely below Brea, in my opinion. I'm going to throw Imatech the Stormlord into the C tier. Yeah, there's some good things that you can do with it, but still. Moving on. Next up, we've got apparently Megatron got in there. Megatron Tyrant. A 753, uh, 7543 red, white, black. We got there. Robot, more than meets the eye. You can cast a converted for that cost. Your opponents can't cast spells during your combat. That's nice. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, you may convert Megatron if you do. Add colors for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. And then you can flip it to Megatron Destructive Force. When to actually sacrifice an artifact, when you do, you deal damage, sacrifice artifacts, mana value, target creature. The excess damage dealt this way itself to the creature controller. Then you convert it back. 
This one's interesting. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's able to give you a good amount of mana, kind of like every other time, essentially. Yeah, you need to have your opponents lose life. We've seen some commanders like this before a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it's not bad. It's not great. I, I think it's not it's not the worst commander out of all of these, but it's definitely, I think, around Imatex level. So let's throw it into the C tier. Moving on. And yeah, again, I do encourage you to actually, you know, comment below and let me know your thoughts on all these are. Moving on, we've got Mishra, Eminent 1, a 5 for Human Artificer for 2, blue, black, red. Begin of combination your turn, create tokens, copy of target non-creature artifact you control, except its name is Mishra's Warform. It's a 4-4 four, four artifact creature, additional other types, it gains haste of turn, sacrifice to be an next 10 step. There are some very powerful and very broken things that you can do with this. I personally have lost to infinite extra turns with this, essentially. Yeah, um, there are definitely some really good things you can take advantage of. Again, ETBs, LTBs of certain artifacts, being able to make copies of them. That is pretty powerful. This commander does have a decent cost at 5 mana. There are definitely ones that do cost more. It is a pretty powerful effect. There are ways to take advantage of that trigger and doubling it up potentially. Yeah, overall, I'd say it's just a solid commander. It's not in the top tiers. I'm going to throw a Mishra Eminent 1 into the B tier. Moving on. Urza, Chief Artificer. Yeah, there's a lot of Urzas. <laughs> Here we go. A 4-5 Human Artificer for 3 white, blue, black. Affinity for Artifact Creatures. Creator Artifact Creatures you control have Menace. The beginning of your end step, you get a 0-0 Colorless Contract Artifact Creature Token. With this creature, gets plus plus 1 for each Artifact you control. Basically, a commander that you can keep recasting for the most part for just 3 mana. Again, white, blue, black, because that Affinity. Artifact Creatures getting Menace. That's nice to be able to help either get them through or force your opponents to block with multiple creatures. And of course, the end step trigger. Yeah, you can, you know, over time make a good sized army with this one. I do think this one is lacking compared to other ones. I do think that this is probably not, I keep saying this, like probably not the bottom tier and I haven't gotten any in the bottom tier yet. So we'll have to see, but just kind of with my thoughts, I think this is definitely on the lower end. It is not the D tier, but I'm going to have to throw you in the C tier. <laughs> and let's see, you know, if I end up with way too many in the C tier again, like I have in the, in the past. So here we go. Next up, another Urza, Urza, Lord Protector, a two for human artificer for one white blue artifact instant source spells you cast cost wants to cast that is incredible that is insane that is just massive 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 cost reduction again like i've talked about before hey uh reducing artifacts can be a very brutal and broken thing artifact storm is definitely a thing your instant sorcery is also getting reduced can be great as well yeah a spell slinger type approach can be used as well also pay seven if you both own and control urza lord protector an artifact named the might zone weak zone you exile them then meld them into urza planeswalker activate a sorcery and that flips over into Urza Planeswalker, a seven loyalty Planeswalker. You may activate the loyalty abilities of Urza twice each turn rather than just once. Plus two is artifact in source spells you cast costs two less to cast. You get two less, so you have more reduction. Plus one, draw two cards, discard a card. Zero, you get two soldiers. Minus three, exile non-land permanent. Minus 10, artifacts and Planeswalkers you control gain indestructible. Zero non-land permanents. Yeah, a pretty game ending on the back side. But um, yeah, I mean, either side essentially can be incredibly powerful. The front side especially, just not even having to worry about actually getting to that point. If you do, great, you can flip and you can probably win from there. But yeah, being able to artifact storm off is very much a thing with this one. Again, low to the ground commander that reduces the cost of artifacts. Pretty gross. So I think, again, very powerful. Just I think I do have some other ones in mind, or at least another one in mind, I should say, that is S tier worthy. So I'm going to throw you up there, Joyra, again, with that artifact storm kind of build in mind. A tier for you, Urza. Or should I say, uh, Urza Lord Protector. There's a lot of Urzas. So. Speaking of which, oh my goodness, Urza, Prince of Krug. Here we go. A 2 3 human artificer for 2 white, blue artifact creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2. Pay 6, create tokens, copy target artifact you control, except say 1 1 soldier creature to other types. This one is quite funny in that it can combo with a very weird card. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's like Power Stone or something. Power Stone Charter, something like that. Basically, you can make a lot of tokens of it. You can do that. Yeah, there's different ways to kind of go infinite with this. You, you could go about it in that direction. Just at a base level, this really isn't all that powerful. I mean, yeah, you got to have a, a decent amount of kind of pieces in play, a decent amount of setup to actually go infinite with this. Six mana is a lot to pay unless you've got like training grounds essentially. But yeah, six mana is a lot to pay to copy an artifact. And it being coming a creature is actually usually a bad thing because it's more easy to remove with a board wipe like a Wrath of God. Artifact creatures getting plus two plus two. That's nice. A, a good anthem effect from there. Just overall, this one is outclassed by others. I do think, oh goodness gracious, I do think it is definitely outclassed by others. I actually again, 
I'm probably just going to overflood this C tier, but I believe it is C tier. I do not think it is any worse tier out of all these commanders. So there you go. Urza Prince Crude, C tier. Next up, Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter. A 1-2 Legendary Artifact Creature, Thopter, Flash, and Flying that costs 3. You may cast color spells and artifact spells as the they had Flash. Whenever you cast a spell, the amount of mana spent to cast the spell is greater than Liberator's power. Get a counter on Liberator. The most important thing here is basically Vidalcan Ori for your artifacts. I mean, you basically are color spells too. Basically, your entire deck essentially since you are in colorless. Yeah, you can just flash speed anything out, which can be very, very good. Sure, you get counters on this, which is nice, but again, more importantly, basically just Vidalcan Ori as a commander for your entire deck. You are limited to Cutlass, but again, there are still some powerful things that you can do. Overall, goodness gracious, this one's one of those that's like probably like, depending on the build, like B slash C tier, like a C plus B minus. Oh, goodness. I'm gonna have to say let's go with a B tier commander for now I'm, I'm probably gonna regret that in the, in the future right now but but right now you know what just as it's stacking up I do think that this is again with the right build you can go Eldrazi travel you can get a ton of mana really quickly and flashing in Eldrazi at instant speed is pretty crazy so there you go moving on Albu Ancient Witness a 4-5 golem that costs three red white other artifact creature control of haste whenever one of our artifact creature control attack Albu is gonna deal X damage any target you scry X the number of tapped artifacts you control that can be quite a bit. I mean, artifact, creature, tribal, like just swinging out might not be the most powerful thing. There are definitely some powerful artifact creatures out there. I mean, Blightsteel Colossus is an example, obviously. But yeah, giving them haste is nice. Uh, the more important thing, though, is that, you know, if your artifact creatures attack, you deal damage and scry. And that's just based on the number of tapped artifacts, not just based on the number of artifacts that attacked. Ah, goodness gracious. I mean, I think that compared to even some of the other ones in the C tier, though, I might have to just move this one down. I'm going to have to move this one actually down to the D tier. I just don't think it's quite there compared to some of those other ones in the C tier. Though I've been wrong in the past, and let me know in the comments below if you disagree with that. So yeah, Albu, I think it's yeah, kind of like a C minus D plus is kind of how I'd put it. Regardless, we're moving on. Ozgir the Reconstructor. 4-4 four, four, Giant Artificer of Vigilance that costs 2 red white. Pay one, sacrifice an artifact, target creature control gets plus two, a zero until left turn. Pay X, tap, exile an artifact. With mana value X from your graveyard, create two tokens or copies of exile card. Activate only as a sorcery. This one can get pretty gross pretty quickly. Actually, you can exile very powerful artifacts out of your graveyard. I mean, just even think about like a soul ring and how far ahead that puts you. This commander obviously is also a sacrifice engine for you for your artifacts, so you can get them into your graveyard. That being said, yeah, there are ways to discard them from your hand. Looting effects, there's plenty of those in these colors. And also other sacrifice artifacts, you know, that are that are free. Like Car Clan Ironworks, that's a way to sacrifice an artifact essentially for free. And actually even more so, you get mana from that. But yeah, being able to then, you know, get a soul ring out, tap it for mana, sacrifice it, exile from your graveyard, get two copies of it instead. That can just put you way, way ahead very, very quickly. This is a commander that is definitely one to be reckoned with. Oh, goodness. Osgear, I do think that you are very good, and I'm going to have to throw you up. Oh, I mean, it is an activation that you don't have haste for, but obviously there are artifacts that can give haste. Uh, I mean, sheesh, I think I'm going to throw you up in the B tier. You're probably up in the B tier. You're like a B. Oh, goodness. Maybe like a B or B plus to me. Regardless, moving on, we've got Zolodok Void Gorger, a 7-4 Eldrazi for five in a colorless. Color spells you cast from your hand, mana value seven or greater, have cascade, cascade. So, yeah, this can give you a lot of value cascading again and again with your big spells. Obviously, again, like I said in the past, I mean, there's plenty of ways to ramp very quickly, very efficiently, and very effectively when you only care about colorless mana. Like, Ever Flowing Chalice is a great card, essentially. And you are able to really, really take advantage of, again, just worrying about colorless mana and nothing else. Being able to just get a ton of mana into these things and just, you know, dump mana out, dump giant Eldrazi out. And on top of that, when you're doing that, you cascade into potentially other big things as well. Cost reducers can really help you out too, like Ugin, other things as well. But yeah, th this is just a commander that I think has a lot of potential. It's one that, again, does cost a decent amount of mana. It is kind of limited to like big spell tribal, but with a lot of value, once you're set up properly, you can do some crazy things with it. I do think that compared to some of the artifact storm commanders, it's not quite there though. So I will say this one is probably, in my opinion, a B tier commander, though it does have a lot of potential. Next up, Joyra Ageless Innovator. Another Joyra, two, three, human artificer for blue, red. Tap, put two ingenuity counters on it. Then you may put an artifact card with mana value X less from your hand on the battlefield, X number of ingenuity counters on Joyra. Joyra has a lot of potential. I mean, 
First up, yeah, tapping you get two counters on Joyra. That is quite a bit. Again, if it's, you just even one, it would still be pretty powerful. But getting two, that's just great. You're just doubling up the quickness of this. Of course, there's plenty of ways to untap Joyra as well. A lot of ways in these colors to do so. So do that. Tap again, getting another artifact into play for free, essentially. One turn can be enough to get enough counters on this to get your biggest artifacts in play. Obviously, you have proliferate effects as well that you can utilize too to make sure that you get, you know, as many counters as you need on Joyra. You can just tap, cheat something in, tap, cheat something in, tap, cheat something in. That being said, yeah, when it's taken out, you do kind of reset things. You can kind of artifact store and build around this as well. I don't think it's quite as powerful, though, as other Joyra and Urza, though. So we're going to throw Joyra in the B tier, a good middle of the road commander compared to some of these. Next up. Gandalf the White, a brand new commander that is really, really, really becoming a popular commander very quickly. A 4-5 Avatar Wizard with Flash that costs 3 White White. You may cast legendary spells and artifact spells as though they had Flash. If a legendary permanent or an artifact entering or leaving the battlefield would cause a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. Basically, um, Flash Speed, either Legendary Tribal, or again in this case, Artifact Tribal, which I believe Artifact would be the more potent of the two. With uh, Panharmonicon and kind of like a Death Harmonicon, but again, it's leaving the battlefield, not just, you know, death triggers, essentially. So, yeah, th that is a pretty crazy commander. One that, again, it allows you to just play Vidalcan Ori Speed, but also gives you other benefits outside of just, you know, what Liberator does. So, again, you play at, you know, instant speed. I guess, I guess the difference there is this is not like Eldrazi Tribal because it's just artifacts, although I guess it could be because of Legendary. So, there you go. It really could be. So... Yeah, being able to double up legendary triggers, artifact triggers, entering and leaving, that's a ton of value. I mean, even just think like sad robot plus this equals two lands and draw two, essentially. So that's pretty, I mean, just as a base level of kind of a what you can do with a commander like this. Again, playing at flash speed is already just a really good thing. You're limited to mono white, probably, in my opinion. Again, the weakest out of all the mono colors. That being said, in comparison to a colorless commander, you've got access to a lot more cards. Yeah, again off the white, I think that, well, ugh, oh, sheesh, I mean, you're definitely a very powerful commander. I think, though, we're going to put you up in the A tier. I think you're an A tier commander, again, with that kind of a Dalkin Ori, flash speed, doubling up BTBs, doubling up death triggers, and other leave the battlefield triggers as well. That's a very, very, very powerful thing. Next up, Karn, Legacy or Forge, a star star ledger artifact creature golem for five mana. Power top and each equal the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. Any of your upkeep, add colors for each artifact to control this mana. Can't be spent to cast non artifact spells until I'm turning it loose mana up to phase end. This is a commander that has the potential to hit for a lot of damage. Again, be basically a two shot KO if you've got something like a Metalwork Colossus in play. And of course, if you've got like a double striker on this, like a Fire Shrieker, that can be a one shot KO, KO even. But I mean, the more important part here is that giant, just massive amount of mana that you get for free on your upkeep that stays with you through your turn essentially just to be able to utilize this to dump into other massive artifacts or just a ton of artifacts just a ton of value flooding the world of artifacts of course you know this doesn't say you know for each non-token artifact so of course you can take advantage of food tokens treasure tokens clue tokens blood tokens creature tokens as well yeah there's plenty of ways to just flood the board of artifacts get a certain amount of mana with this it is a good commander it is one that I think does have potential. I don't think it's quite up to the middle of the road, though, when it comes to, in comparison to some of the other commanders that we've seen so far. I mean, it might, it's either like a B or C. It is kind of like a B minus C plus again, and I really just need to kind of make the decision here. And maybe I'm just being biased. Maybe I'm just being biased because there's like more B tiers right now. You know what? I think I actually am going to throw Karn up into the B tier again. It does have potential to just knock players out, just happenstance, you know, being a giant commander. And obviously the amount of mana that can give you is a great resource that you can utilize. So yeah, I, for right now, that might be wrong. You know, probably a C plus B minus, but we'll leave it there. Okay, here we go. Urza, Lord High Artificer. Yeah, there's a reason why I haven't thrown anything in the C tier yet. Sorry, C tier, S tier. <laughs> there we go. Because Urza was still around. Urza, Lord High Artificer, the OG Urza, if you're not counting like Blind Seer. A 1-4 Human Artificer for 2 blue, blue. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 0-0 zero, zero Colorless Construct Artifact Creature Token. With this creature, it's plus, plus 1 for each artifact you control. Tap an untapped artifact you control, add blue. Pay 5, shelf your library, exile the top card until the turn you may play a card with paying its mana cost. Okay. A lot going on here. Most importantly, all of your artifacts now can just tap for mana. And it doesn't even matter... If, you know, it's an artifact creature like the construct that you're making, you can tap it right away because it's Urza that has the ability. It's not giving the ability to those creatures. So essentially, 
yeah, uh, everything is now just a uh, mox. So have fun with that. This is broken. This is crazy powerful. This is probably the most powerful commanders of all time. And yeah, it definitely, in my opinion, deserves the S tier treatment. I mean, Urza, you kind of set the bar for just broken commander a while back. And uh, it's kind of hard to argue against you being just up there. Being able to just dump a ton of mana. Again, you're going to have an absurd amount of mana very quickly, very easily, very effectively. Every zero mana artifact that you might have in your deck is now just, hey, a mox, which is banned. And then, uh, hey, uh, yeah, just dump mana into that five. Get free things off the top of your library. Plenty of crazy things you can do with a commander like this. Yeah, I don't really need to talk about this one anymore, I don't think. Urza, you are most definitely, in my opinion, an S tier commander that does stand above the rest. You are crazy good. Next up, for Maz, Blight of Rest Ghost. Three for Phyrexian Cat, because that's a thing. They cost two white black. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian creature artifact spell, incubate X Rex that sells mana value. Beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died, you control this turn proliferate. This is a solid commander. This is one that, again, I would build Artifact Tribal if you had to go between the two, and that's the direction that we're actually keeping, you know, track of, essentially. But yeah, cast a lot of Artifacts, essentially. Get a good amount of Incubate Tokens, essentially, that you can pay two to transform into Phyrexians. If you sacrifice them, you can proliferate to get more counters on those tokens or other things as well. Again, like, Everflowing Chalice, those kinds of cards can be great with something like this to be able to get more and more mana out of them. It's a solid commander. It's one that can go wide, can go pretty tall as well. I think overall it is kind of outclassed by others in here though so i'm gonna throw you up in the c tier you're a good commander just not not quite there in comparison to some of the other heavy hitters that we have and again in artifacts we really have a lot of heavy hitters next up okay sorry gimbal here we go all right here we go gimbal gremlin prodigy there is also a reason i've been keeping the d tier mostly clear as well a 4-4 four four gremlin artificer that costs two green blue red Artifact creatures you control of trample. At the beginning of your end step, create a 0, zero red gremlin artifact creature token. Get X counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. Okay, so, um, yeah, outside of this being our very first gremlin commander, which I'm excited about because, like, Gizmo, you can have, you know, like, really cute, you know, like, gremlins movie, you know, like, references with this, you know, you can have a really cool, you know, theme to the deck potentially, or you can just have, you know, a good altar of this that is Gizmo and can be adorable. That being said, um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's nice. It's not overly powerful. You got to kind of go with a weird direction against like differently named artifact tokens. That's kind of like the tribal you need to go. And that's kind of, it's interesting, but obviously like one board wipe can set you back to the stone age. And then you have to like really try to get the exact cards that you need again to actually kind of set yourself up just to make big tokens. Yeah, they have trample. Yeah, there are other ways to take advantage of that. This commander costs five mana. It probably didn't really need to cost five mana for what it does. Um, it's an interesting commander, but it's not one that is anywhere near the others on the power level. It's going to be in the D tier. And uh, it, again, when it comes to like Albu maybe being like a C minus D plus compared to some of these other ones, this is just straight up D. Maybe even a D minus <laughs> in comparison to the other ones. So there you go. Next up, Rashmi and Ragavan. 2-4 Elf Monkey for 1 green, blue, red. Whenever you cast first spell during each of your turns, exile a top card of target opponent's library, create a treasure token. If you cast exile card, the paying its mana cost. If it's spell, mana value is less than the number of artifacts you control. If you don't cast this way, you may cast this turn. Yeah, I mean, being able to just get a lot of artifacts in play, again, is the name of the game with this commander. Obviously, making tokens, making treasure tokens is pretty crazy. Uh, this only triggers on your turn, though, each of your turns. So that is a limitation to this this is you know a decent effect to be able to say yeah I, maybe if you know like you have a lantern of insight essentially i believe that's the name of that one you can see everyone's top of the library you can know exactly you know who to target and get something massive off the top of their library and just be able to cast things for free um yeah i mean this take that has a good amount of potential compared to some of the other ones though it's not quite there it is, uh, yeah, it is probably a C tier commander. It is a good commander, is a solid commander, but it is not quite up to the level of the other commanders that I've talked about so far. And oh goodness, now I'm really kind of rethinking this Karn one. I'm really rethinking it. I don't know if I should be or not. Oh goodness. All right, we're moving Karn down. I'm sorry, we're moving Karn down. Karn, you've been moved down, you've been demoted. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, now away from Karn, away from Rashman. We got Emery Lurker of Locke. A 1-2 Merfolk Wizard for 2 and a blue. This spell costs 1 cast for each artifact you control. Enters the battlefield, you mill 4. Tap to target artifact card in graveyard, cast this turn. This commander is pretty absurd with the right build. You can very easily go infinite with this commander. Again, being able to cast artifacts out of your graveyard can be a very, very broken thing. Again, artifacts are a very broken thing just inherently once you have the build around them. Um, this commander, again, can just keep costing 1 mana again and again and again. 
Yeah, there are plenty of ways to untap this commander to do it again and again. Plenty of broken things that you can do with your artifacts. Uh, I think Emery, oh, goodness gracious. I mean, again, probably like CEDH. Okay, I shouldn't talk about CEDH again. From a casual perspective, Urza is definitely more powerful than Emery, probably in CEDH as well, but I'm not sure. I'm going to go with an A tier. I think that feels right. A very, very, very powerful combo centric commander that I think is just up there, you know, with again the other Urza with Joyra, et etc. et cetera. So there you go. Moving on. Discoria, Forge Tyrant, a red artifact commander, mono red. Vi Fort, Dragon for nine mana in total affinity for artifacts. You might only cast it for just three mana. Flying in haste. Whenever it attacks, exile the top five cards of library. We cast an artifact spell from under this turn. If you do, it has affinity for artifacts. Yeah, I mean, a good commander, a solid commander, one that you can keep casting for a low amount. Being able to cast things for free off the top of your library is nice. Extra combats can be nice with this commander as well. There are other commanders out there, obviously, in the artifact tier that actually, you know, outclass this one. That being said, it's going to give you a good amount of value. Um, I think overall, yeah, I feel pretty confident with placing this one in the C tier. And unfortunately, that is becoming a bit flooded, <laughs> which again, has happened before. I've actually I've flooded the B tier, flooded the C tier before. I don't think I really flooded the A or the S tier. I usually reserve those, but uh, but yeah. Okay, here we go. Moving on. Urtet Remnant of Memnarch, a 2 2 Legend Artifact Creature Mirror for three mana. Whenever you cast a mirror spell, you get a 1 1 mirror. Begin of combat, your turn, untap each mirror control. Five and tap. Put three counters in each mirror control, activate under your turn. Basically, a really fun mirror tribal commander, one that you can utilize, uh, you know, other effects. Well, it is five colors, so you can affect, you know, you can utilize shapeshifters. That can be great as well. You can take advantage of cards like Maskwood Nexus. You can take advantage of token doublers. You can take advantage of things that allow your to mirror to actually all just tap for mana, which can be great. So uh, yeah, we just got a brand new one as well. I can't remember the name of it. Let me know in the comments below what that one is again, like Elvish something. But yeah, ways to allow your mirror to tap for mana. Again, that untap can be fantastic to really take advantage of tap effects. Being able to get counters on your mirror can be great. So you can turn your tiny army into something much more well, potent, uh, overall, an interesting commander. Overall, uh, not one that is at the bottom tier, but again, I might be over flooding the C tier. We're going to throw in the C tier, C tier commander. I got a problem. It's with C tier commanders, apparently. Next up, Graz, Unstoppable, Juggernaut, 7 5, Legend Artifact Creature, Juggernaut for 8 mana. Juggernauts you control attack each combat fable. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. Other creatures you control have base power toughness, 5 3, and our Juggernauts to other creatures and types. Yeah, I mean, this commander does have downsides. It does have upsides as well, though. I mean, can't be blocked by walls doesn't really matter. Attacking each combat of Fable is a downside, although you probably are going to be pretty aggressive with this one. Being forced into combat usually isn't a good thing. But having your other creatures become 5-3s, I mean, if you're just focused on making a bunch of creature tokens, yeah, you can go pretty wide pretty quickly and just make them all into, you know, from 1-1s one to 5-3s. That's like plus 4, plus 2. That being said, you are limited to colorless, and there's only so many ways to make tokens and colorless, because they decent up in only so many ways. And again, being forced into combat, that can just be detrimental. And this commander does cost eight mana. Overall, yeah, I think actually you are going to be joining the D tier. It's kind of, it's like that D, C, it's probably D plus C minus, but yeah, I think I'm going to end up going in the D tier with you. So there we go. And then finally, we've got Duretti, Scrap Savant. Three of uh, loyalty for a Planeswalker Duretti, obviously. Three and a red plus two. Discard up to two cards, draw that many cards. Minus two, sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return tar artifact card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Minus ten, you get an emblem with. Whenever an artifact is graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And of course, Duretti can be your commander. Yeah, basically set yourself up with big artifacts in your graveyard. Sacrifice tiny artifacts, bring bigger ones out. And if you can get to that ultimate, yeah, that's a pretty big emblem to actually get. There are some proliferate effects in mono red. There's not too many. I mean, obviously there are certain artifacts that can help you out that as well. So if you get there, there aren't really, you know, any like counter doubling effects though. You're not have access to green, you know, which what the planeswalkers absolutely love, like, you know, doubling season, that kind of stuff. Overall, a decently solid commander. One that, in my opinion, again, isn't the lowest of the low, is not the best of the best. I don't think it's even the middle ground. So again, I think everyone's pretty tired of hearing me say this. <laughs> oh yeah, I overflowed the uh, C tier. So there we go. It's a C tier commander in my opinion. But yeah, I, I think I feel pretty good about this one. Again, I did have Karn in the B tier, then I moved it down. Other than that, I feel pretty good just looking at it right now of where most of these commanders ended up. Uh, I think, I mean, again, I think Urza is still just a step above all of them, the original Urza. feel pretty good about that A tier as well. B tier looks pretty solid. Again, the C tier might be a little flooded, but it's just the name of the game, depending on, you know, just how commanders, you know, actually end up in you know, their power levels and kind of where they end up in comparison to other ones. Yeah, one, one might be flooded, one might not be. And yeah, the D tier is just kind of lonely down there. But yeah, there's a lot of really powerful artifact commanders out there. So 
they kind of have a you know a step up in certain ways let me know the comments what your thoughts are on this where did i make mistakes in my tiers what would have you done differently what commanders didn't get included in this list again on edh rec that should be you know for the artifact commander so yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below and with that this episode is coming to a close so let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show make sure that you like share and subscribe also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes you can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com we also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock so make sure you check out those as well Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 